Hello, my name is Robert Walker, Insolvency Practitioner and Accountant. This is the 11th in my series on managing insolvency in troubled times and in this session we're going to take a look at a case study. In this session I will state the case um, and in the succeeding session I will suggest the solution. Now then, to achieve this what I've done is I've invented a company called McCorber Limited. Now McCorber Limited is a company that runs a coffee shop in the city centre from rented premises. Its sole shareholder and sole director is Ron McCorber. Now McCorber, being a clever fellow, operates his own accounting system which has a pristine set of records. There might be slightly unrealistically realistic elements in this case study. Anyway, one day um, McCorber prints off a balance sheet and he looks at it and he realises that the balance sheet shows the company is balance sheet insolvent as at the 31st of March 2020. So what he does is he goes along to see his accountant um, and they discuss the matter. The first issue that they come to is Ali says well does this reflect all conceivable liabilities? Well yes and then he says but what about the loyalty cards that I know you have an issue because there are hundreds if not thousands of them and of course says, well, they liabilities? And Ali says, yes, they are. It's just they're probably not capable of being known because you have no records about them. And Corbyn says, yes, that's true. So just bear that in mind as one of the issues that might arise in, um, in managing compromise, which is the notion of contingent liabilities, of which that is a version. Secondly, and more importantly, they then talk about the lease. Now, the lease runs for a considerable period right out to December 21, um, nearly two years away, and they talk about the um, amount of rental that has to be paid, which is $10,000 a quarter. And Ali, who knows something about rentals and um, of commercial premises, said, well, the truth of the matter is that if that was relit today, the landlord would only get $8,000. Per quarter. In other words, your contract is um, two thousand dollars a quarter above market. Anyway, um, as the discussion unfolds with the accountant Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ali explains the options: liquidation or conceivably compromise, which a new idea to McCorber, but he pretty soon warms to the idea. So, what? Um, Ali does for McCorbus for the next meeting is he sits down and he takes the going concern balance sheet which McCorbus has given him and he renders it into a liquidation balance sheet. Now you can see on the screen that there are two um, columns to this balance sheet. There's the going concern balance sheet and then there's the liquidation balance sheet. And if you think about the um, composition of the assets and the profile of the liabilities, you can see some other rather interesting features. You'll notice that the total value of the assets is $26,000. Now, um, and that comprises physical assets, stock of coffee and cups and such like, and a coffee machine. And um, Ali looks at them, knows something about what they would fetch in a fire sale and it would be significantly less so he marks them down to buy um, nearly $10,000 or a bit more than $10,000. He'd already talked to McCorber about his current account and McCorber has confessed that he does not have the wherewithal to satisfy the $10,000 excess that he has taken out which is represented as a um, receivable in the hands of the company under the title shareholders overdrawn current account. McCorber has told him that he could only afford to pay $1,000. Now, <clears throat> the profile of the creditors is just what most people would expect to see, overdraft, trade credits or accounts payable, taxes due, rent arrears, because he hasn't kept up with the rent payment. That's what the going concern liabilities represent. Now, the first three of those uh, appear on the same side. Oh, before I go there, just notice that the company is clearly balance sheet insolvent because it is deficient by seven and a half thousand um, of 
assets compared to liabilities, meaning that Macorba has charged himself to the company at too great amount or engaged in a frivolous expenditure that was of no productive use, whatever, we don't know, but it's clearly happened. So now going back to the liabilities, you can then see that the first three liabilities stay the same, but the rent arrears rockets in value. And the reason is because there is a $2,000 shortfall for each month. And when you ascertain a liability as a liquidator, what you do is you ascertain it at the date of liquidation. But that doesn't mean to say you ignore future runoff effect after the date of liquidation, and that is always the case with leases. The, the landlord is going to be out of pocket for, compared to the contract he holds. He's entitled to claim for the discounted value of the lease shortfall, which is $2,000 a quarter, added up and then discounted back. And that adds about $15,000 to the value of the liability, which Ali represents in the liquidation balance sheet. You'll also notice that there is another liability that doesn't appear in the going concern balance sheet, which is the cost of liquidation. Now that's actually quite important because whilst all of these creditors are assumed to be unsecured, the liquidator is first amounts equals. The company Act, Companies Act um, makes provision for the liquidator to get their money first. Why is this company as insolvent as, as I said, because um, of poor trade, of poor decision making in the past? Now, um, it's that balance sheet, it's, it's probably a liquid, or dramatically a liquid, because Ron McCorber has been incautious and taken far too much money out of it than he can possibly afford. So, once Ali does the calculation, well, of, sorry, once he prepares the balance sheet, he does a calculation as to how much money the creditors are likely to get. And by his calculation, if everything goes as planned in there, in other words, the assets don't fetch less, um, the creditors are likely to get less than 10 cents in the dollar, probably seven, five to seven cents in the dollar. That's all they're going to get. So that, I say that because that establishes the benchmark against which the, the creditors have to consider the compromise, even if it irritates them. So then they discuss how a compromise is going to work, and Corber has put some thought into it, and he says, mm, right, I think uh, what we'll do is we'll reschedule the debt, I will ask them to take a 75 um, cents in the dollar uh, <clears throat> hit, and get 25 cents in the dollar and that I will defer the first payment till the end of the next financial year when we will pay a, a specified sum which I uh, we will work out and then I'll pay the, off, the rest of it off after that. So Harley is very sceptical uh, about this proposal. He says well do you realise how difficult it is to forecast particularly when you um, are confronting such uncertain times as we now all confront. Um, and it would be poor form for you, Mr. McCorber, or Ron, to make promises to pay things at given dates and then find that you can't. I want you to consider, says Ali to McCorber, asking them to accept equity in place of their debt. In other words, an equity for debt swap. Now, McCorber, with a furrowed brow, wonders about that. Um, but he says, oh, I know, I think that they would much prefer a rescheduling than <clears throat> a debt for equity swap. They go away and he starts to do some forecasting. And you will now see the um, forecast of sales. The sales are the key to whether this thing can generate the cash to satisfy the you know, reduced amounts for the creditors. Um, all of the, the cost structure will stay basically the same. And McCorber's analysis shows that there's that there are four lines on the graph. As you can see, there's um, a cumulative year to date, and then there's um, month in isolation as the bottom two lines. And as you can see, the bottom two lines converge at the final quarter, meaning that um, there's a significantly reduced sale in the lockdown period and in its aftermath, but that McCorber projects that sales will become the same as last year, will, will, will assume the same levels in the final quarter. 
Um, now, whether that's an optimistic assumption or not remains to be seen. But um, Ali's still a sceptical about it, and he said, OK, what he then does is a sensitivity analysis. And he says that you have assumed out of your forecast that you'll be able to pay $6,000 at the end of March 2020. However, you'll be able to pay nothing if you uh, don't achieve those sales. Indeed, it'll all disappear if the sales are 8% less than you've calculated them to be, in which case you'll look very foolish indeed. So, what um, they then do is they put together balance sheets for um, the two different method, forecast methods of undertaking the compromise and you can see them appear on the screen. And you can see the, um, the first column is a debt rescheduling and the effect of it is that um, still have sums due to them but they've been reduced um, and such cash is was assumed to generate, be generated has been consumed. However, because their debts have been reduced by 75%, there is an injection of capital and the um, position has gone from 7,000 deficit at 1st of April 2020 to a surplus of $9,000 by the end of the next year. But then you can see the benefit of a um, debt for equity swap. The cash isn't paid out and there are basically no creditors and all the creditors have been turned into equity. The company is very well capitalised now and can, um, uh, its chance of survival is much greater. At some point, McCorp will have to make a decision as to when to pay out the $6,000 to the creditors, but he doesn't have to do it any time soon. He then will talk to whoever he then talks to to see how to make that decision. Right, that is the basic the case stated and we'll look at the solution um, in the next session. In the meantime, below I will uh, there is an, an email address, so if you wish to have the spreadsheet that underlies all of these um, numbers, these balance sheets and so on, um, please write to the email address asking for the spreadsheet. There's one further issue. Ali, well aware that Macorba doesn't have the money to meet his current account debt, says, well, there's a bit of an issue here, isn't there? Because you're going to have to tell the creditors that your debt is going to be forgiven by $9,000. Now, you can do that by undertaking the Insolvency Act equivalent for individuals process, which is called a proposal, and agree, get the company to agree to reduce your debt. But that probably wouldn't look very good, particularly as you must appreciate that you need to have a personal proposal or personal compromise approved by the court. So what's your solution going to be for that? And we will discuss that matter in the next session. Please, if you wish for written material, um, look below the video and you will find uh, ways to acquire it. Thank you very much. Bye.